Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm very good evening for everyone. Okay, uh, so thank you very much for being here today. So I'm glad that uh, we have another session today for uh, Chemistry 06, uh, 0620 for IGCSE. So uh, today we're going to cover about uh, re reversible reaction. Some books might uh, use different topics uh, or different title they might be using chemical equilibrium which is part of the reversible uh, which is part of the reversible reaction as well so today we're going to cover this topic uh, this topic is not uh, very big but uh, it requires uh, deep understanding because uh, in order for you to answer the questions you need to understand the, uh, the concept and the condition of the reaction first before you can actually give the correct answer all right uh, so basically the content of the lecture today we have three main uh, three main uh, subtopics the first uh, i'm going to uh, explain a little bit about uh, reversible reaction what is it uh, all about and how to classify direction then uh, i'm going to move on uh, i'm going to move to equilibrium how we define equilibrium and then how to identify uh, what uh, condition that is required in order for direction to be in equilibrium and the last one uh, which is uh, the most important part of the lesson today is about changing equilibrium so what happened if we change the reaction condition towards the reaction and then how the condition affects the equilibrium so this is actually the most common question that uh, usually asked during the IGCSE exam so hopefully uh, at the end of the session uh, so you will have a better understanding about reversible reaction than the concept of uh, equilibrium because uh, equilibrium is part of the uh, reversible reaction so you understand the concept of equilibrium as well and also understand the effect of changing the reaction condition uh, towards the equilibrium so this is what we are aiming to achieve uh, by the end of the lesson today so uh, let's see how how it goes uh, i expect that we can uh, finish uh, by by nine or before nine and then um, at the end of the session today i'm going to answer uh, the question that you uh, that you have so if you have question uh, if you have issues, you can raise or you can post uh, the question in Q&A uh, uh, apps or Q&A tab uh, in your uh, in your uh, interface, and then I will try to answer later on uh, at the end of the session today. All right, uh, let's move on. Okay, first we are going to see what is reversible reaction. Okay, uh, from uh, I believe uh, from uh, checkpoint okay uh, you have been introduced into a uh, physical chain and chemical change and how to identify a chemical reaction how to actually uh, classify chemical reaction from the physical uh, change uh, on top of that you've been told that uh, the the chain is irreversible where you cannot get uh, what you, uh, the direct turn back after the reaction has completed. So basically, the reversible reaction is quite a new uh, concept uh, that I want uh, that you should uh, be learning today, or I, I'm going to introduce to, to you today. But this this kind of reaction you come across uh, maybe uh, in during laboratory work, but uh, maybe because uh, uh, the reaction has not been introduced. So you not uh, uh, you are not able to actually uh, identify direction. Okay, so I have a short vi a video to show you. Uh, so basically, this is very short video to to classify uh, either this reaction is reversible or irreversible, right? Uh, so let's watch uh, the video together. It's very short, it's a few seconds. Okay, uh, so after the, uh, you watch uh, the video. Uh, I'm going to uh, have a short pause and ask you to think if duration is irreversible or irreversible. Okay, let's watch the video together. Okay. 
right? Okay, uh, so I give you 30 seconds to identify or to characterize if this reaction is reversible or not reversible. And then explain your answer. Of course, you, uh, you are not able to explain to me, but at least you prepare some answer to uh, uh, some uh, answer uh, for, uh, for my question. Is the reaction irreversible and why? Right, so do you have uh, the answer with you now? Okay, so if this uh, reaction is reversible or irreversible? Okay, uh, let's look together. So at the end of the reaction, we have reactions and reactions and reactions. So at the end of the reaction, what you have is basically uh, a char or a charcoal that actually the outcome of carbon at the end of the product. So is it a uh, reaction is reversible? So the answer is no. Okay. Of course, uh, you after the reaction, you might not be able to get the matches back. So that's why the reaction is reversible. Why? Because we cannot get uh, the reactant back or we cannot get the reactant that we use after the reaction has completed. Okay. So that's why the reaction is not reversible. So what kind of wood term that we use for duration that is not reversible? Uh, so it is called irreversible, the okay, irreversible reaction. So this is actually irreversible uh, reaction. All right, uh, so this is actually another video. So this is actually a reversible reaction, of course. Okay, uh, so uh, the video is about the heating of uh, hydrated copper to sulfate. So you can see uh, before I start the video, so the copper to hydrated copper to sulfate, the color is blue. Okay, hydrated copper to sulfate where, uh, where copper to sulfate contain uh, water of crystallization. Okay, during the, the, the heating, water, the water will be released uh, during the reaction. Okay, let's watch the video together. Okay, first initially watch the color of copper to sulfate. Okay, uh, the color is blue. Okay, let's watch together. So when we heat, we can see that the droplet of Right, we, we okay. Uh, so we're going to add a little bit of water towards uh, uh, to the hydro uh, anhydrous copper to sulfate. You, you can see now the color changing uh, from white to blue. So basically, uh, what we have here, so we have the hydrated copper to sulfate back. So it's still uh, not a solution. It's still a solid, uh, just a little bit of water uh, uh, give uh, hydrated copper to sulfate back from anhydrous. So basically, so what happened? Uh, so what happened? This is actually uh, the most common uh, example of uh, reversible reaction that we normally show because you can see very clearly the color change. So why this is a uh, because some some students might confuse, they might think that this is uh, only a physical change. So uh, if you can see uh, from the reaction, there is actually a color change. Okay, the color change from blue to white. So this is also indication, an indication that there is actually a uh, 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 there is actually a chemical reaction because the color change. So so what actually happened? Uh, the blue hydrated copper to sulfate when uh, undergo heating, they will release uh, the water. The water of crystallization. So we are start. Uh, we start. Uh, we started off with a uh, hydrated copper to sulfate, and then the product we got is actually uh, anhydrous copper to sulfate and also water. That's why you can see some uh, wa water droplet forming at the mouth of the test tube uh, during the heating process. Okay. Uh, so basically, this is actually uh, the, an example of. Uh, 
an example of a uh, reversible reaction. Why we call it reversible? Okay. Why this reaction is reversible? Because so uh, when we heat uh, uh, hydrated copper to sulfate, so we, the product that we get is copper to sulfate, which is white. Okay. And then uh, just uh, by uh, putting a little bit of a uh, few drop of our water. So what we get, so we get back uh, hydrated copper to sulfate, okay, which is blue. Uh, so uh, basically the forward reaction, uh, in order for this reaction to, pro uh, to proceed, the forward reaction is best, uh, endothermic. Okay, because you need to provide heat, heat is needed. And then uh, when you add few drops of water, you can see uh, in the video uh, uh, previously, there is actually a lot of heat coming out. So basically the backward reaction is called, uh, the backward reaction is basically exothermic. Uh, so this is what normally we normally see uh, for the reversible reaction. It's one side is endothermic. Usually the, the, back, uh, the backward uh, of the reaction is actually the exothermic, okay? Uh, so this is actually the introduction for the uh, reversible. Uh, what is reversible reaction? Uh, is all about. So basically, the reaction can proceed. Uh, uh, can proceed forward and produce a product, and then the product can be turned back into the reactant uh, during the similar reaction. Okay. Uh, so basically, the reaction has not changed so much. Uh, in this case, we're still using water to turn anhydrous copper to sulfate back to hydrated copper to sulfate. Right. So. Uh, so basically, what is a reversible reaction? It's a, re uh, it's a re uh, direction that can proceed both direction, forward and backward. So we can produce the product and then product can decompose back into uh, the reactant. And then we normally use uh, this sign. Okay, you will normally see uh, uh, the sign to indicate that the reaction is, so this, this sign basically to indicate the reaction is uh, reversible. So this is means that it can go forward and can come back. Uh, it can go backward as well. So uh, another uh, other example uh, that we normally uh, that or you come, you may come across uh, in the syllabus, which is the the uh, direction between ammonia and hydrochloric acid, or uh, sorry, the ammonia and hydrogen chloride, uh, hydrogen chloride gas, where uh, direction produce uh, white uh, solid. Okay. Uh, so this reaction also reversible because uh, ammonium chloride uh, open heating you will get uh, the ammonia and hydrogen chloride gas back after, uh, during the reaction. Eh? Uh, so basically when you heat ammonium chloride you will get uh, ammonia and um, hydrogen chloride back. So basically when you heat here so this uh, ammonium chloride so this is actually ammonium chloride so when you heat uh, the ammonium chloride will decompose back into ammonia and hydrogen chloride and then it travels towards uh, the mouth of the boiling tube and then they actually uh, react again here and that will form uh, such uh, a precipitate or solid at the surface of the mouth of the test tube. So basically this is indicate that this reaction is basically uh, reversible as well, right? So uh, before we proceed to uh, the next section, so let's do this to get, uh, together, uh, uh, identify which reaction that can be reversed and which reaction cannot be reversed, which is uh, irreversible. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes just to decide which reaction is reversible and which reaction is irreversible. Okay, two minutes. All right, uh, let's have a look for the answer. Okay, for direction one, 
So I put here, so for direction one. So this is basically uh, the production of ammonia through a uh, Hebel process. So this is actually a reversible reaction. Eh? And then the second one is actually the decomposition of ammonium chloride, which I, uh, I showed you just now. So also reversible. Uh, for this uh, third reaction, so this is second one. For the third reaction, is the combustion reaction of uh, hydrogen. Okay, so this reaction is irreversible because you cannot get uh, hydrogen and oxygen back just from uh, heating the water. Okay, uh, and the last one is actually the reaction between anhydrous carbonate sulfate to produce hydrated. So this is also possible, right? Uh, so this is the fourth one. Okay, uh, so this is the fourth one. Right, uh, so the first one is reversible, second one also reversible, third one is irreversible. I think I'm missing my E here. Okay, and the last one is reversible, right? All right, now we're going to see about equilibrium. Okay, uh, so we're going to, uh, to have a look about the Lichatlis principle as well, which actually govern the equilibrium. All right, let's have a look at this picture together. Okay, what actually happening here? Okay, we have a container. Uh, we have a large container, which are small balls inside the container. And the mother uh, going to pick one ball at a time and put into the container. And uh, the boy at the back, okay, the boy at the back will, will do the opposite which is uh, he going to pick one ball at a time and then uh, put it out, okay? So let's see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? Uh, so let's uh, have one minute thinking. So what will be the number of small balls in the container after maybe uh, one or two minutes? And explain. Why? All right. So, uh, what do you think? How many balls will be in the container after two or three minutes? Okay, I give you a few options. An eight, a nine, ten, and seven. So what will be the answer? Okay, what will be the answer? So the answer is, it's going to be an A or an eight. Why? Okay, if you if you think very carefully, the mother will put uh, one ball at a time, and then the boy also will take out one ball at a time. So basically, the number of balls in the container will remain constant because when the mother put one ball and the boy will take out another ball. If the, pro uh, the process continues, okay, the process is confined in this uh, small area. So the ball, the number of ball inside the cotton is the same and the number of ball outside the cotton will also be the same. Okay, uh, so this is actually uh, the analogy of the chemical uh, equilibrium okay, during the reaction. Where during the reaction, what will happen? If we see this reaction together, so this is also still uh, a Haber process for the production. So equilibrium takes place for the reversible reaction, okay? Uh, because for the irreversible, uh, so it is out of the question about the equilibrium because the reaction only goes forward. So uh, for the equilibrium, 
if you see this reaction, the reaction between uh, nitrogen gas and uh, hydrogen, okay, as the reaction proceed, okay, the product of the reaction going to be uh, the ammonia. Okay, of course here is different uh, reaction, but it's going, to, it's good to see the relationship. So what will happen? Uh, first, uh, reaction proceed very quickly. Okay, okay. Uh, at the same time, at one point, the product also will start to decompose as well. Okay, this is actually the forward reaction, production of ammonia. And then at the same time, what will happen is some of the ammonia will also break down into a hydrogen and nitrogen gas. So if we ask ourselves, what is the point that we, uh, we actually carry out this reaction? Because if we want the ammonia, but the ammonia uh, keep break, uh, breaking down uh, into hydrogen and uh, nitrogen gas. But because uh, this reaction uh, is carried out in a closed system where uh, there's no, uh, during the reaction, there's nothing coming in or nothing going out. So what will happen? At one, at one particular point, they will reach the equilibrium, where at this uh, point, the rate for the production of uh, ammonia is the same as the rate of the breaking down of ammonia. So we will have certain amount of ammonia in the system. At the same time, we also have certain amount of nitrogen and hydrogen in the system. So that is it where, uh, and then this, co the concentration of ammonia, hydrogen and uh, nitrogen in, at that particular point will remain constant. They will need, they will no, uh, will, there will be no change in terms of the amount of this product. At this point, we call it equilibrium, where the reaction, the reaction that did not stop, the reaction keep, the forward reaction is still going on and also the backward reaction is still going on. But because they are uh, pro, uh, proceed, they proceed at a, a similar, uh, no, they proceed at the same rate. Therefore, uh, the amount or the concentration of both reactant and product will remain the same. This is what we call equilibrium. This is actually the analogy that you can see uh, from the picture that I showed you just now, where the mother uh, tried to actually put more uh, put balls into the container, but the kids taking uh, the ball from the container. If you think that putting ball into the container is a product, the ball taking out the, uh, the ball from the container is actually breaking down into the reactant. So at one particular point, you will have only eight, eight balls in the container. And then the, the as long as uh, both the mother and the boy continue to doing what they are doing at the same rate, so you will have, you will remain uh, you will, uh, the ball inside the container will remain uh, eight balls throughout until until there's some uh, disturbance or until some condition is changed. Then the number of ball inside the container also will also change, right? Uh, so th th that's what we're going to see after this in terms of changing equilibrium. So basically, when we are talking about uh, equilibrium, there's three main points that you need to remember. So uh, what, what, what basically, the point number one, when we say uh, equilibrium, at equilibrium, rate of forward and backward reaction must be the same. Okay, it must be the same. The rate must be the same. The rate is not constant, but the rate must be the same. There is actually a difference between same and constant. So let's say that the forward reaction is uh, 10 cubic centimeter per second. So the breaking down also will be the same at 10 cubic centimeter per second. That's what it means by the same. Okay, the rate of the forward and back variation is the same. Uh, the second uh, condition, uh, the second uh, point at the equilibrium that you need to remember is that at this, uh, at this particular point, the concentration of reactant and uh, product remain constant. Okay, so use this term uh, very carefully. Okay. Okay, constant. Uh, it's not the same. So if you you saying that at equilibrium concentration of reactant product is the same is wrong. Okay, the the, the concentration of product reactant and product is not the same, but they are constant. So uh, for example, if we have if we have uh, at the equilibrium uh, twenty five percent of product and Sorry, uh, and we have uh, at the equilibrium, 70% uh, of the mixture is the uh, product. 
and 25% is reacted. This concentration will remain constant. We remain uh, constant throughout the, the the process because uh, the process or the reaction is at equilibrium. So you will always get or uh, the, the concentration of reactant is always 75% until you change the condition. That's what we say remain constant because if you say the reaction uh, condition, uh, the, the, the concentration of reactant and product is the same, that means that if the concentration of reactant is 50%, the reactant also must be 50%, which is wrong, totally wrong for the equilibrium. So we don't say that concentration of reactant and product is the same, but we should say concentration and or uh, concentration of reactant and product remain constant. And the last condition uh, for the uh, equilibrium, the, the reaction should be carried out in a closed system. Because if the, uh, the reaction is carried out in an open system, for example, as you see just now uh, for the heating of uh, hydrated copper to sulfate, you will see that during the, the heating process, because the, the, the reaction is open system, because the heating is uh, the what we call the product can can be released to the surrounding. Okay, it's not actually closed. Okay, uh, so uh, it's quite difficult for you to to get the equilibrium for that particular reaction because they are open. So the water that can be out from the hydrated uh, hydrated copper to sulfate being released to to the surrounding. So in order to get the uh, hydrated copper to sulfate, you need to actually add water. Okay, this is not true for for equilibrium where the system is closed. So the reactor, uh, the, 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 whatever the reaction tissue is inside the uh, reaction vessel, okay, uh, there's nothing coming out and nothing uh, going in for, for the reaction vessel, right? Uh, so this is uh, basically about equilibrium. So just a quick test before we proceed to the last part. So what is meant by the term equilibrium? How you define equilibrium? Okay, uh, do you mind to write, write the answer down? I give you one minute. Right, so what is meant by equilibrium? So basically equilibrium, equilibrium refers to the condition where rate of forward and backward reaction is the same while the concentration of reactant and product remain constant. Right, so basically uh, this is how we define equilibrium. So usually in the exam it's quite a famous question. So usually this question will give you, uh, you will be awarded with two marks. Okay, the first mark going to be from here and the second mark going to be from here. Oh, I, I think I'm supposed to use a red pen. Okay, from here and here. So one is about rate 
the other one is about the concentration okay uh, so uh, you don't have to specify about the closed system because we, uh, if the reaction is not carried out in the closed system of course the reaction will not be in equilibrium all right okay uh, so this is basically about equilibrium so now what we're going to see is we're going to explore about the changing equilibrium which is the main part uh, that actually uh, wrap up everything about reversible reaction and equilibrium. So it's going to test the, your understanding about the equilibrium. All right, before that, uh, let's have a look about uh, Le Chatelier's principle, which is what actually uh, governs the, 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 the equilibrium in terms of what happened when we change the equilibrium. Okay, uh, the Chatelier principle introduced uh, that uh, says that when a chain is made to a condition of a system in a dynamic equilibrium, okay, the system moves so to oppose the change. So what what does uh, this uh, statement means? So if any particular reaction they are in equilibrium. Okay, they have achieved the equilibrium. If we have, if we change something to direction, either uh, by doing, either by changing the pressure, by changing the temperature, or by changing the concentration, so the, the system or direction, we try to actually minimize uh, the change that we made into changing the equilibrium. We try to oppose that change so that it will reach uh, another, what we call it, another set of equilibrium. So it will reach a new equilibrium for the system. Okay, uh, so uh, it, uh, it goes the same for uh, the Haber process that we see just now, because uh, Haber process is carried out uh, in a closed system. Okay, we need to monitor the pressure, the temperature, uh, uh, and also uh, the concentration of hydrogen and uh, nitrogen okay uh, for the reaction so so it's it's kind of a very tricky situation in order for us to get uh, the maximum uh, amount of ammonia from the reaction so basically we need to actually uh, modify the reaction condition okay uh, we need to modify the reaction condition so that we can get the optimum uh, condition to produce the maximum uh, amount of yield that we need from the from the reaction. So uh, basically, what what kind of condition that we are talking about here? Uh, so basically, factors that affect uh, the that affect the equilibrium will be uh, three. You see from here is quite similar to what you come across in rate of reaction. Okay, but here we don't have the catalyst. Okay, uh, catalyst does not affect the equilibrium but it does, it only affect the rate of reaction. So it, it makes the reaction complete faster, but the equilibrium it won't be affected, okay? In terms of the amount and everything, it won't affect uh, the equilibrium. So don't, don't, don't get confused with uh, the equilibrium and rate of reaction because there are two things, okay? Two things, because the rate of reaction basically measuring the, what we call it, uh, the speed of the reaction. However, for uh, the equilibrium, it measures uh, in terms of in which side of the equilibrium will 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 move up, will move either uh, the product will be produced more or the reactant will be produced more based on the condition that we change for that uh, particular reaction. Okay, uh, for for the temperature. So what will happen if we change the temperature? So uh, here is actually uh, um, uh, the, the fact that I'm stating here is for the increasing the temperature. So if we increase the temperature, so what will happen uh, if we increase the tem uh, the temperature? So uh, the reaction that will pro uh, that will be favored is actually uh, endothermic reaction. So it depends either the forward or backward reaction is endothermic. So we, we if we increase the temperature, so the side the actually uh, endothermic side of the reaction will be favored. So uh, the equilibrium uh, will move towards that, that side. Okay, uh, we're going to see a few examples after this. Uh, vice versa, if you reduce the temperature, the, the reaction or the equilibrium will favor side, will favor towards exothermic side of the reaction. 
okay, uh, it moves towards the exothermic side of the reaction if you lower down the temperature. All right, uh, and then for the concentration, uh, so if you increase the concentration, uh, so the, uh, it says here the, uh, the equilibrium, uh, it will shift the equilibrium in direction that produce less of the substance. Uh, so uh, this is, I think, is uh, should be explained clearly with example. So for, for example, what, what, what is, uh, it means here, if you, you, if you add something uh, into the system in equilibrium, for example, if you see just now the reaction between uh, uh, nitrogen and hydrogen to produce ammonia gas. Okay, to pro oh, sorry, it's wrong. This one is okay to produce ammonia gas. So what happened if the uh, concentration? So if we uh, if the reaction is already in equilibrium, okay. If we add more nitrogen, okay, uh, if we increasing the concentration of substance, shift the equilibrium in direction that produce less of that substance. So if we put nitrogen, that means there will be more nitrogen on this side. So what happened? The system will try to use uh, the extra nitrogen that we have and produce more ammonia. So that the equilibrium will move to the right hand side to use extra uh, extra uh, nitrogen that we have uh, in the system. Okay, that, that, that what it means by this statement. Okay, and the last one uh, about pressure, increasing the pressure shift the equilibrium to the side that produce less number of mole of molecule of gas. So uh, basically, uh, pressure only applies for gaseous reactant. Okay. Uh, the factor for pressure only applies for gaseous system. That means that all reactant and uh, product in gaseous state. Uh, so if we have um, any component in the in the system that that is not a gas, then uh, you increase the pressure or you reduce the pressure will will not affect the equilibrium and also the yield as well. Okay. So uh, I'm going to show you after this one by one with an uh, example to, uh, to, to let you see uh, more clearly about the effects, the effects of changing equilibrium towards, uh, changing the, the correction condition towards uh, equilibrium. Okay, let's see the first one. So basically this is uh, uh, one of the reaction uh, that takes place in a contact process where uh, sulfur dioxide react with uh, oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide and then um, here so you have a uh, thermochemical equation you are given the delta, uh, heat of uh, reaction eh, which is uh, you can see over here okay the sign which means this reaction is exothermic so the forward reaction is exothermic It also means that uh, straight away that the backward reaction is endothermic. So what will happen uh, to the yield and also equilibrium if we increase the temperature? Okay, uh, so as I told you just now, uh, when we increase the temperature, uh, the equilibrium will move or will favor to the side of endothermic reaction. So if you see over here, okay, from the reaction, the backward reaction is endothermic and uh, the forward reaction is exothermic. So what will happen when we increase temperature? So when we increase the temperature, it says here forward reaction is endothermic and backward reaction is endothermic. So if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium will move to the left. Why it moves to the left? Uh, and, uh, uh, so when the, the equilibrium moves to the left, it also means that more reactant will be produced and then we will have less, less, uh, less yield of the product. Why? Because uh, backward reaction is exothermic, uh, sorry, forward reaction is exothermic. So by increasing the temperature, uh, so the reaction favor backward reaction because the backward reaction is endothermic. Okay, uh, so that's why uh, if we have 
uh, this kind of reaction. So we need to to actually, uh, if we carry out this reaction, so we need to actually know uh, what we call it, what kind of con reaction condition to produce uh, the maximum yield. In this case, uh, if you increase the temperature too much, you will you will get less product. Okay. Uh, so if you uh, lower the temperature, maybe you will get more product. But there's actually various factors also involved in this case. Okay, uh, so the, uh, basically to answer the question, what will happen to the yield and equilibrium? So the question asks about two things. One is yield about equilibrium. So uh, equilibrium, I see this is how we answer. Okay, what will happen to the equilibrium? Equilibrium will move to the left. Okay, uh, so the easiest way. Uh, so uh, equilibrium move to the left or equilibrium to the right. So equilibrium move to the left, okay, uh, and then yield will decrease because uh, the question didn't ask to explain. But if the question asked to explain, you will say that because uh, the forward reaction is exothermic, backward reaction is endothermic. So at or increasing the uh, temperature favor backward reaction as it is endothermic. Okay, uh, so increasing temperature, remember higher temperature favor endothermic endothermic side of reaction okay so this is actually about the effect of uh, temperature towards uh, equilibrium or uh, on equilibrium all right uh, the second one okay the second one uh, i'm also still using a uh, same example okay the reaction between uh, sulfur dioxide and oxygen okay uh, and then here is the effect of pressure if you can see here Okay, sulfur dioxide in gaseous state, oxygen in gaseous state, and the product also in gaseous state. So when 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 you want to discuss about the effect of pressure, that's what you need to check first. Make sure that all component in the reaction mixture is in gaseous state. If one of them is not, then the uh, pressure will have no effect towards the towards the equilibrium and also towards the yield. Okay. Uh, so what will happen to yield and equilibrium pressure increase? Okay, before we answer this question, okay, before we answer this question, because uh, if you see uh, from the slide previously, that I show you the effect of pressure. When we increase the pressure, uh, uh, the uh, direction will proceed towards uh, the side with less number of molecules. So before we answer, we need to count how many number of molecules or how many number of mol on each side. Okay, for the reactant, we have two sulfur dioxide and one oxygen. So basically, we have three uh, molecules or three, three moles of the reactant. And on the right hand side, we have we have two. Okay, we have two number uh, two molecules, two sulfur trioxide molecule. So basically, the the product has less number of molecule. So to answer the question, what will happen to the yield and equilibrium if pressure is increased? Okay, uh, so uh, if we see previously, if we increase the pressure, the reaction will proceed or the reaction will favor side with less number of molecule or less number of mole. And in this case, if you can see, okay, the reactant side has three number of moles and the right hand side only got two. So if we increase the pressure, so what will happen? Okay, what will happen? Uh, the equilibrium move to the right hand side. Okay, or, or, or equilibrium favor the right hand side. Okay, uh, if we if the reaction favor the right hand side, that means that we will have more yield or yield will increase. Why? Because uh, when we increase the pressure. Because on the right hand side, the number of the the number of molecule is less. Okay, so increasing the pressure will favor side with smaller number of molecule, which is on the right hand side. Okay, uh, so if we increase the pressure, so uh, we will get more product, more sulfur trioxide because uh, sulfur trioxide only got two number of molecule. Okay, uh, so this is basically how we we tackle question about the effect of pressure so you need to count the number of molecules okay or the number of moles okay you can see the coefficient in front of the reaction so to, to know that uh, the number and then you add up everything so you will get the num total number of molecule on the uh, right hand side and or, or the left hand side and total number of molecule on the right hand side so that's how you uh, uh, you will be able to determine uh, the side of direction Okay, that will be favored. 
Alright, uh, okay, uh, sorry, uh, the last one, uh, this is not supposed to be temperature, this one supposed to be concentration. Okay, uh, so, so I, I choose a different uh, reaction for this one. Uh, so this one basically the reaction between bismuth chloride and water. So uh, what will happen to the yield and equilibrium if uh, concentration is increased? All right, uh, because the, uh, this is for the sake of learning, so I didn't actually mention about which which component that we increase it temper uh, it concentration. So I, I'm going to show you uh, both situation. The first one, uh, so if we increase the amount of water, so we add more water to the system. So what happen? We will have more water. Okay, we will have more water than previously we, previously we have during the equilibrium. So what will happen? So the equilibrium will move to the right so that the number of water will be reduced. Okay, how the number of water will be reduced? Because the number of water that we add will react with the remaining bismuth uh, chloride to produce the product. So the equilibrium will move to the right and then our yield okay, will be increased. Okay, this is if we increase uh, any particular, uh, we increase the concentration for the reactant. So what will happen that we will get, uh, the, the equilibrium will always go to the uh, right hand side to produce more product if we add, if we change, we increase the concentration of the reactant. However, for the second situation where we add, okay, if we add more hydrogen, uh, uh, more hydrochloric acid to the system, because we know that for the forward reaction, hydrochloric acid is one of the one of the product. So when we add more hydrochloric acid, so what will happen? So the reaction will move to the left because it tried to decompose some of the hydrogen chloride, uh, sorry, hydrochloric acid, and produce bismuth chloride and and water. Okay. Uh, so this is how the system try to minimize the change. Okay, uh, similar uh, similar concept. Okay, changing the concentration is not merely uh, adding substance, but changing concentration also means that we remove some substance. For example, uh, in this situation, we have the uh, uh, what, uh, hydro, uh, hydrogen chloride is our uh, one of the product. If we remove hydrogen chloride. So what will happen? The concentration of hydrogen chloride become uh, less. Okay. So what will happen? The equilibrium will also move towards. Uh, to uh, we move to the right hand side because to to produce more hydrogen chloride that that we lost from from the reaction. Uh, because if you see from the first one we increase, that means we are adding more substance. Uh, it give uh, the effect towards the equilibrium. Uh, similar similar thing also will take place if we remove some some of the reactant or product. Okay, if you remove the reactant product, it means that the concentration of that particular component in the system decreases. Okay, so it affect the the, the, uh, the equilibrium shift. Okay, the direction of the equilibrium either move to the left or move to the right. Okay, uh, so basically I already covered uh, all three uh, condition uh, or three condition uh, that affects. Uh, E uh, chemical equilibrium okay and then how each uh, factor uh, affects and then uh, with the complete example for each each one okay uh, so we we but with that we come to uh, the end of our session today uh, but as as what we normally do at the end of the session i have already prepared uh, some question for you to answer so that after that we can discuss the answer together okay uh, so this is actually uh, one of the uh, I pass here for IGCSE question. Uh, so uh, you can read on the slide. Okay, at most temperature, sample of nitrogen uh, dioxide uh, are equilibrium mixtures. Uh, so it already says in the question they are at equilibrium. Okay, uh, so at 25 degrees Celsius, the, mix, uh, the mixture contain 20% of nitrogen dioxide. At 100%, this has a uh, risen to 90 percent is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic give reason for your choice okay explain why the color of equilibrium mixture become lighter when the pressure on the mixture is increased
Okay. So uh, I give you five minutes. Uh, so each each one of these carries two marks. So I'm going to give you about five minutes for you to, to answer the question. And then I will come back uh, to discuss the answer after five minutes. Okay, so five minutes for you to answer the question.
All right, uh, so five minutes have ended. Okay, uh, so let's discuss the answer together for question number one. Okay. Okay, for question number one, uh, at 25 degrees Celsius, the mixture contain uh, uh, nitrogen dioxide, okay, uh, on 20%. Uh, okay, uh, at 25. And then uh, at 100 degrees Celsius, which is increase the temperature, this uh, this has risen to 90%. Uh, so basically, when we increase the temperature, more product, uh, more nitrogen dioxide is produced. Okay. Okay. When we increase the temperature, more nitrogen product is produced. So as uh, we discussed earlier, okay, uh, when we increase the temperature the direction favor the endothermic side. So the question asks you either if the forward reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So backward is endothermic. You know that when you increase temperature, more reactant is produced. So basically the backward reaction is favored. So backward reaction is uh, endothermic. So that, that makes the forward reaction is exothermic. Okay, to answer the question forward. Okay, forward reaction is exothermic. Okay, give a reason for your choice because decreasing the temperature. Mix. The equilibrium move to the left. Okay, uh, so that means that uh, forward reaction is uh, sorry. increasing temperature means it could move to the left. So Backward reaction is endothermic. Okay, uh, that's the reason that we can give. Okay, uh, so increasing the temperature, uh, direction, uh, the direction favor back, uh, backwards, uh, the direction favor backwards side of the, the backward side is reaction is favored. That means that the backward side is endothermic. Which also makes that the forward reaction is endothermic. Okay, this is question uh, question uh, one. Question two: Explain why the color of equilibrium mixture become lighter when the pressure. Okay, now we are going to use the factor of pressure. Pressure is increased. Okay. So over here on the left hand uh, on the left hand side we have two mole or uh, two uh, molecule of nitrogen dioxide. And on the right hand side, we only got, got one. Explain why the, uh, the color of the mixture uh, become lighter. Uh, so that means that we increase the, frame, uh, the temperature. The color become lighter because the product on the right hand side is pale yellow. So if we increase the temperature, uh, the, 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 the pale yellow product produce more. That means the dark brown product will be less. That's why the product because the mixture become lighter. So to answer the question why, first we say that uh, as the temperature increase, or as the temperature, uh, sorry, it's not the temperature, as the pressure increase, Okay, uh, as the pressure increase more, as produced as at higher pressure, side with smaller number of molecule is favored which is
which is the forward uh, right, the right hand side. Okay, uh, so basically this is a uh, this is quite a long answer. Okay, uh, so I'm not I have no intention to give you the answer that you're supposed to answer in exam. But I, I, I try to actually uh, ex give you uh, give more points for you to explain uh, during the exam. Okay, although the question only carries two marks. Okay, but uh, it's worth for you to explain in terms of uh, the yield and also in terms of the equilibrium. So. Uh, in this question number two, we basically equilibrium move to the right hand side because uh, the right hand side has smaller number of molecules. So you must mention, okay, you must mention which side has smaller number of molecules and then which direction the equilibrium will move. I think uh, basically uh, that's it for, for tonight. Okay, uh, so it's already 10 o'clock. Okay, uh, so thank you very much for your time for being with me tonight. Uh, so uh, I hope that if uh, I, I will I will have another session, uh, I will I will see you again. Okay. Uh, so before uh, before I leave, okay, uh, is it's good if you can actually uh, fill the feedback form. Okay. Uh, so you can actually type uh, 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 copy down the uh, the address for the feedback form. So if you fill up the feedback at the end of the feedback form, you will get under the link for, for the